tournament in King's Landing wasn't a complete failure for Raywin. She fought among the ranks of accomplished knights and some beginners. The king paid little attention to the melee, but the small crowd came to call Raywin's name. That was until she faced the hound. After three swift strikes, Raywin was toppled. Her wounds were seen to by Bryden, and the band rode north to the Vale, seeking out an old forgotten book. However, the trail ran cold. Whilst returning to King's Landing, the band stopped off in Saltpan. It was there another melee was to be hosted. And this time, Raywin fared much better. She fought among her companions and was tested once or twice. But the Iron Crab was victorious, taking home a prize and some coin from clever bets. The life of a tawny fighter was one that Rewin never strode for, but with a taste of victory and new coin in hand, it would be difficult to ignore its call. Oh, the Weeping Town has not changed much, has it, Raymond Keltica? No, it hasn't, Bryden. But we have, haven't we? Well, we certainly have more coin in our pockets. A good change, then. Yes, and no. All right, I'll bite. Why is that a bad thing? Your renown is growing, my lady. And with that comes certain complications. For now, you are an ally of the Lannisters, and yes, while they remain in control of this war, that is in our favor. However, should that switch, or the Lannisters deem you to be a threat? They'll chop off my head. Yes, I, I know how that goes. Not just for that, my lady. I did some digging. Your father. Yes? He's risen his banners in support of Stannis Baratheon. He has, has he? Yes. And whilst you claim to share his name, there could be complications that arise from that. I see. Yes. Well, it's unlikely for my father to be a war hero. I don't see him striding out across the seas to fight Tywin. No, perhaps for now. But his ships have a chance to disrupt trade. Oh, all I'm saying is we should be cautious. There are many ways in which this could fall apart. I realize that. For one, my family could be seen as traitors. Or, if my fraudulent actions become known, that in and of itself is a crime punishable by death. Yes, it is. Here's my thinking. If my father truly is such a thorn in the side of the throne, what if we remove that thorn from the lion's paw? You mean to say... Yes. I mean to say removing my father from the equation. That would be a bold move. Yes, and I haven't quite decided yet whether it is the right move or not. That would be no small task, my lady. This isn't Lord Dark we're speaking of. I know. I know. I need an army. And you're already training one for Tywin. Yes, I am. We'll need more then, won't we? We would need a lot more. Then that is what we will do. We will raise an army. We will unseat my father, and perhaps then the Hand might recognize us. Perhaps the King would have the power to legitimize you. Removing one Celtica for another could very well be in their favor. You would then be well in their pockets though, my lady. Yes, it doesn't matter which way we play this, there will be dangers. But I have you, don't I? And the others? Guidance is always appreciated. Well, thank you, my lady. For now, prepare the others. I think it's high time we see exactly what my father has been up to all this time. Kia ora, guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rykon here. Welcome back to Raywin's Tale. We are sitting here outside of the Weeping Town after having a conversation with Bryden. 
about the future. Now, while we are here, we have just completed a mission. I think it's going to be worth us setting up a business here. Now, I have had a look to see what the most uh, cost-effective business for us to run in this town would be, and would you be surprised? It's an ironworks. Maybe it's just our experience in metalworking. Um, but it's the best out of the lot that I can see in terms of the initial investment and how much we end up getting per week. If you have a look with me here, if we go to tools made from iron, it's going to cost us 3500 and we're going to get just under 400 a week. The closest I could find was oil. And it's more and we get less. So really the best thing for us to do here would be to set up an ironworks yet again. So sure. Here's the, uh, here's the cash up front for that. Now, that can and probably will change, but having two ironworks in the, in the southern regions, I feel like can, can, you know, it can make a difference. And so we have yet another ironworks now. Yay, I'm happy about that. Very, very happy. And in terms of uh, where that armor went from the last episode, we've actually given it to Garrett for now. He's the only person who has 20 strength to actually use it. Surprisingly enough, as a bowman, you need to be quite strong. Now, we have coins, which is great. Our weekly cost is going to be offset by a large amount, but we are still trying to get some sergeants, some Westerland sergeants trained up for Tywin. So that's something that we're going to have to focus on. But we also need to focus on making our way out towards here, this point, and towards home. There is a semi-independent faction out here, Crack Claw Point. It might be worth us trying to see if we can recruit some troops from around here, because it's a very small, um, small grouping. And I don't know if we can actually find any faction information. Let's see. It is ruled by Eustace Brun. Okay, it doesn't occupy a huge amount. And we have Sir Lucifer Box, Sir Rupert Crab, and Sir Bernard Brune in place there. Yeah, and they have no issues with anyone, it would seem. Just, you know, just all good. <laughs> no wars happening there at all. Uh, and another thing I, I was hoping to actually show you in this episode is a little bit of uh, family history, if you will. If we go across to the Lords here and we have a look at uh, Lord Adrian Keltiger, the father of Our Lady Raywin, we can see that uh, he actually does have two other daughters, Jelana and Beres. Beres? Beres. Yes. Um, we can see that she is only 16 and the other is in her 20s. I, so the way that I would see this is Raymond would have been born in between these two sisters. So Bayries would have been born slightly before Raymond. Well, actually, yeah, it's close to close to the same time, but uh, she's a little bit younger than that. Um, but yes, that is Adrian, her father. And interestingly enough, we can see that um, he's married to Delara Valerium, who is another house like the Celtigers, who originally hail from Valeria, a fact which Raywin is unaware of at this stage. And as we can see from Raywin here, she doesn't have the Valerian traits, the silver hair, the purple eyes. Seems her mother's genes were more dominant. And so with that, we need to set out towards the point. And we'll see if we can find out any more about this other faction that's here. A faction which our father is not allied with. And it's going to be a bit of a ride for us to get up there. So as always, we are going to be keeping our eyes out to the woods to see if we can track down any bandits, brigands or broken men so that we might train up some of these troops. And while we are traveling there, I think it's probably going to be worth us trying to pick up a few more Westerland levies, just so that we stand a good chance at actually getting them upgraded, if we can keep them alive for long enough. So we'll try these two towns here to see what we can get. Oh, interesting. You intercept a raven. A message is tied to its leg with a golden thread. The paper fine, and the ink exquisite. It urges all loyal lords to support Renly Baratheon 
as the only true king of the Seven Kingdoms, by virtue of being the brother of the former king. Oh, there we go. It is starting to kick off. The Stormlands have declared war against Dragonstone. The Stormlands have declared war against the Westerlands. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. And we just, just, just started constructing a business there. Well, that could be potentially problematic, um, especially if we are to become a vassal of Tywin. And interestingly enough, a young girl from a nearby village offers herself to you. It will cost only 20 silver. We're going to ignore her. We're not, we, don't, we don't need to pay. You know, we don't need to pay. Roman doesn't need to pay anyone. Let's go ahead and recruit some soldiers. Oh dear. It was a bloody ambush. Okay, okay. Alan, help me out here, bud. Nicely done, son. Excellent work, Alan. Let's stay moving up. Keep the shield up. We've got this, Alan. We've got this. A good strike. Come on, then. Yep. Want to go? Gotcha, son. All right. Nice job, Alan. Nice job. The band is full before us, like we to a scythe. We've taken them out. Good. Well, we'll see if we can still recruit some folks from there. I would like to think that we're going to be able to, especially after that, and four Westerlanders are willing to join us. Yeah, so... We can see that because we aren't a vassal of the of the Lannisters, of the Westerlands, we're, we're okay. But that that could be... It's potentially problematic. I maybe should have gone with Sunspear or, or another location. It's just the Weeping Town somewhere where we've had a lot of history. Oh, dear. Well, we're going to have a fun time, aren't we? just realized there are some places out here that we haven't really looked into. The ruins of Essen, one of those locations, and Morn out here on one of the isles. Hmm, yes. And obviously these two factions are fighting now as well. We have Stannis taking on Renly and, uh, yeah, Renly declaring war on the Westlands. Dragonstone, I don't know whether they are actually at war with the Westlands yet. That will probably change in time. For now, I think, you know, Stannis has just been staying on Dragonstone. And, well, I'm sure they're trying to send for them. We do have Rutiger being sieged already. Oh, it's all starting to kick off. Let's see if we can get around to King's Landing. Maybe sell off some of these extra goods that we have. And then continue riding on. Okay, so we can see that it's cost us 395 to have our troops for now. The Ironworks in Old Town has produced 200 golds worth. Which isn't massive, but still. Each time it's going to offset our total costs. Which is exactly what we needed to be doing. And would you look at that. Sir Davis Seaworth. The Onion Knight, riding across the bridge. Well, we'll continue on. We don't have any uh, reason to speak with them at this stage. But it's always fun seeing a familiar face, or a familiar name, riding out there. So, let's get some things sold before we move on. We're going to go ahead to the marketplace and look at selling some goods. While we're here, it's probably worth us um, stopping in with the Guildmaster and seeing if there's anything else that we can do for him at this stage. So we'll sell off all these heavy leather jerkins and we make back a bit of coin, which is more than good enough. Uh, the pork is now rotten. We'll go ahead and sell that off. And that actually leaves us with not a huge amount of food. So we probably should go purchase some more. We'll go sell that. Um, we'll pick up some cheap bread. Hmm. I wouldn't mind getting some smoked meat, but uh, there's none here. So we'll just go pick up some more bread for our troops to feast upon. And we still end up positive out of that exchange. I am slightly tempted to have a look at horses, but my gosh, the horses in King's Landing are very expensive. Oh, yeah, some of the ones back in the Westerlands weren't as expensive. And they are well known for their horses as well. So, yeah, maybe I should have taken that up. Let's go ahead and head back for now. We're going to meet with the Guildmaster to see if there's anything that we can do. Good day, Raven Keltiger. What can I do for you? 
Do you have any jobs for us? Hmm. I was looking for an able adventurer like you. There's been a disturbing rise in the level of wine-related crime recently. So, it was grain, but now it's wine. Sure, we can hunt down these bandits, these thieves, and yeah, that looks like the wine thieves we are after. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to run this group down, but we should be able to pincer them between a few of the other lords that are here. There we go. We got them. Well, Mitt, can I help you with something? You don't want to buy some wine, per chance? Wait, your sellsorts were sent out to hunt down some common thieves. Ah, oh, well, sorry to say that times are tough lately. For this trouble and strife, it occurred to us that a small group of, let's say, experienced men would attract far less suspicion than your typical roughnecks and layabouts. When this opportunity arose, well, to refuse would have been positively mad. Well, I'll bring you some madness. You'll be a better fight than just thieves. Draw your weapons. The pleasure is all ours. Men to me. Okay, we have 147 against the 12 because we have <laughs> some of the other Westland Lords helping us out here. So really, we're not going to be doing much in this fight at all. We're going to let them ride on ahead of us um, and we'll just ogle the numbers going into this fight. Yeah. Not bloody bad. And I think that's just one. One grouping of... Westland soldiers, some of them running off in other directions, perhaps looking to flank. I think that's just Alan, just chilling out all the way back there. No, it looks like a crossbowman, actually. And uh, we are actually noticing um, the frames drop a little bit here. The larger scale battles are going to be a bit more intense, and it's going to require a bit more processing power. In which I might have to drop down some of the other effects. Make it look less pretty. Yeah. But for now, we're generally fighting in smaller battles, so it's not something I'm too concerned with. Seriously, this fight should be over pretty quickly. All those troops. Well, I guess we were the ones that actually managed to stop them. Something. <laughs> Yes, very, very easy. Uh, I think Jasper actually got some kills there. So good job, Jasper. Um, all right, done, done and dusted. That's the wine thieves. We'll head back to King's Landing and we will collect our reward. Tywin is still here, hanging out in King's Landing as you do. Oh dear, let's go see. Guildmaster, the reward please. Fantastic, thank you very much. We'll take the experience, we'll take the renown and the improved relations. Do you have any other jobs? Deliver local wine to Pentos. No, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> and you might notice once we have talked to people quite a bit and we start to get similar missions, I'm not going to be reading through every single time. Uh, but when we do have new things popping up, I most certainly will. Now we are gonna be riding over here and it looks like I think, hmm, no, these places weren't taken before Rook's Rest, it was just them. Yeah, so let's continue riding up towards here to see what we can make of the place. I do want to recruit some more troops from up there as well. Patrolling around Rook's Rest, hmm, if he's patrolling it would make me think that he is uh, looking to encounter some folk. Eustace Brun, and that is quite the army very impressive okay do we have a fight going down here no nope. they're all still neutral to each other uh, but we do have Lord Bryce riding out here trying to hunt down some of these uh, Dragonstone patrols we see there's always all kinds of things going on in the east we're gonna ride on to uh, Charmouth here and we're just going to do our usual checking in with the village elders to see what's going on and then explaining or rather sharing our tale head over to rushing falls and then we'll see if we can maybe recruit some folks i would like to visit the whispers as well as we start to make our way closer towards here let's go see that village elder we shall leave 
Okay. It's unbearable here, apparently. Wow, it's not doing very well. Not at all. Rook's Rest just looks like another kind of keep. And generally the keeps aren't super interesting. They're interesting if you own them. Definitely interesting then. Uh, but they're not like proper towns. The only thing it's saying that though is like looking at a place like the Weeping Town. That is actually a town. Even though it looks like it's more of a keep. So I suppose it could be worth us still just like having a quick check in. Looks like the Diadem is just a regular a regular keep. But Boggs, we'll see if we can recruit some of the troops from here. Because they are kind of our, our more closer to our homeland. We can get four levies to join us. Excellent. I like it. We can pick up some from the pines as well. We'd be able to pick up even more if we are able to do some errands for these towns. But generally the towns don't have too much work. We'll go meet with the village elder. I should have actually done that in the other one as well. And we'll quickly see if there are any tasks that we can help with. I have a delicate matter. I'm in need of someone that can help. There's a young maiden called Nina the Tall, who's run off with a lad from a neighboring village. Run off, can you believe it? We're living in changing times. When I were a boy, something like that would be unthinkable. Anyway, her father is on her back night and day, saying that, as an elder, I should get her back. And it puts me in an uncomfortable position. So I'm thinking you might head over to Boggs and convince the girl to come back. I'll try. Mm, that's excellent. I will be grateful to you. And so will the family of the girl. The youth of today. Mm. One more thing. You best make haste. In my experience, these things are usually settled within a couple of days. Very well. Let's head on to Boggs to see if we can convince this one. Oh! To return. And as we're riding through the forest, we catch sight of familiar sails. The sails of Rewin's father. To Boggs, then. <laughs> Um, it, this also seems remarkable here. Attack wedding guests. Gee, okay. A wedding is taking place here. People are singing and laughing until they catch sight of you. The mood of the crowd quickly turns sour, and the men are charging at you, wielding clubs and daggers. Ah. Huh. Are we really going to do this? I don't think Raymond was expecting all of this. We're going to going to leave. We're not just going to murder these people. <sighs> we have 10 days to finish that quest. Well, I don't suppose we can actually meet the village elder in between. We're going to ignore the wedding. We'll try to, and see if we can assist this elder with something else. Actually, I was looking for a reliable helper that can undertake an important mission. The wife of one of our farmers was taken by bandits a couple of days ago. Man's distraught. We cannot pay you, my lady, but we would be welcome if she came back. The bandits have asked for a ransom. 500 coins. You'd had 15 days. It's not a lot of time. Look, I'll see what I can do. If those bandits are there... I'm sure I'll be able to collect from them anyway. I'll return in that time. Good. I knew we could trust you in this matter. Thank you. Very well. All right. The Pines. So, we're just going back and forth between these two little villages here. Um, okay. Uh, now, the question will be, are they actually here? Hmm. I don't see... Oh, there... Wow. 31. That's... A, that's that's a that's a pretty damn decent size. Uh, they're just bandits. Doing air quotation marks here. But still, that's... Uh, that's nothing to scoff at. Are you the one that brought the money for ransom? Quick, give us the money now. How about you release the woman first? And then I will give you the money. <laughs> You're a fool. Stop playing games and give us the money. Well, I could. 
You see, I've left it in a safe place. But I don't have intention of paying you until you release Thormu. You won't be demanding anything when you're dead. Okay, let us get ready, get set for whatever is coming this way. Um, and not a great position to start with, really. Let's go ahead and get the archers back here, if they will be so inclined. Um, it often gets tricky when you're near the edge of the battle map here like this, so we might not actually be able to do that. The archers seem to be freaking out entirely. Just, uh, guys, formation orders, fall back 10 spaces. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to. God, that's frustrating. <laughs> um, yep. Can we get you over here? Looks like we can just get you behind the infantry line, which isn't going to help us out all that much. It looks like only some of you can get behind. So infantry, I want to tell you to go ahead and advance 10 paces. Try and give our archers a chance to slip between the gaps here. Okay. There's a lot of them. Let's get ready. Oh, a little hit there. Oh, okay. Come on. Damn it. We're taking too many hits here. Come on. Infantry, you can charge in now. The archers got absolutely decimated there. Not my, not my Bannerman. Damn it. And we are down. Some of our men are still up. How did we end all the way up here? Okay. Jeepers. Well, they outnumbered us slightly, but our poor positioning really cost us a lot here. Made it through, but only just. Well, I say we've made it through, but there's just two of us left. One more enemy. Jeepers. A fight that did not go as well as I had hoped. Whoever you are, good sir, you've done a fantastic job. Jeez. That could have gone so much better. We probably lost quite a few levies there. We'll see. Could you be one of the crack core point units? How many did we lose? Seven. Well, seven isn't that bad considering. We did lose some morale there because obviously we lost quite a bit. <sighs> yes, you're coming with me. Let's go. The very injured Raywin and others make it out of that. But we did get a lot of experience from that fight at the same time. We get two veteran Westlanders out of that, which I'm happy about. We don't have any sergeants yet, but uh, we're on our way. Far out. We're close to getting one. Okay. Tywin, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, let's go over here. I wouldn't mind getting another archer, actually. And yeah, I think it was. No, it wasn't one of the crack wall. It was a northern vanguard that we have with us. Well, you were damn decent, my friend. We can get some spearmen or some longbowmen. Let's go ahead and get some crackclaw spearmen and see how they uh, stack up. They're looking pretty decent. We'll go move them a little bit further up, just with the veterans there. The miller's wife. We have to hang out for now. And we've got a longbowman. And Alan leveled up. Good for you, Alan. But uh, yeah, he's still kind of knocked out for now. We all are. We're going to go ahead and share the loot with our men. And not bad. It's actually pretty decent. The the armor on that, um, yeah, 40 body armor ain't nothing to scoff at. I'm going to go ahead and take that and just see who we might be able to give that to. 
And looking at our bows, nothing there is too impressive, but we can go and... Well, I was going to say we could hand out some of those arrows, but they're pretty average. Oh, and after that, we actually did get some more upgrades. Okay, Alan, you're now on 20. Bloody brilliant. Now, I'm relatively sure that his equipment is actually better. Yeah. <clears throat> than the other armor that we had before. Surprisingly enough. And so, Sir Jasper Rivers, you are going to be the proud owner of that new... Briny? Bruny? 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 Yes, whatever and however we pronounce that. All right, but at least we can go ahead and return. Riding back, and I think it was Boggs that we had that quest. We're going to have to wait for the other one to just disappear because we are not going to go kill a whole heap of the wedding guests. It's, uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. But we have made progress. Um, oh. We have her. Has she not turned back up there? Uh, we are nearly home. Let me double check. I was sure it was here. Uh, back to box. Yes. Okay. All right. Meet the village elder. Um... <laughs> Hmm, I think because we can't actually enter the town, that could be the issue here. So let's go back over here. <laughs> we're going to talk with this village elder, and we're going to explain that, uh, well, we're not going to be able to finish that. Yes, so, oh, so we can see that's minus three right now. Not great, not great. That would take quite a bit to get back up. It's something that we might look at doing eventually. But I would hope for now that we can return here, and sure enough, we can. Thank you so much for bringing me back. I can't wait to see my family, my sisters, my mother, and even my husband. You see, it would have been terrible if we killed all those people, and she just turns back, and they're all dead. So, yeah, it wouldn't have been the nicest thing for us to do. But here we gain some renown, and they like us a lot more here now. We might even be able to, yeah, recruit a whole more troops. Seven, in fact. Let's see if there's anything else we can do for the Elder. Can we help you with anything else while we're here? Uh, you must help. Um, they're, they're eating our food. Wait, let me explain. Several days ago, uh, a party of noblemen arrived here in the village. They were on their way to Sunsbear in the south. They were attacked by bandits. The escort fled, and the noblemen themselves barely made it here. We can't get rid of them now. They refuse to leave without an escort. They're chubby fellows, my lady. They eat and eat and eat. Do you think you could take them there? To the south, to Sunspear. That is quite a way. Hmm. I'll take them on board for now. It is the least I can do. I have never been to the south. I'll assist. In return, perhaps you could provide me with some extra men. Uh, very well. Very well. Okay. Well, we have some nobles, and I don't actually know if they are here. No, they're not in our, in our grouping here. Uh, but we have to take some nobles down to Sunspear, and Sunspear is right at the southern end of Westeros, all the way down here. Yep, it's a, it's a wee ways away, all the way down in Dawn. I wouldn't mind visiting Dawn. There are a few places we could see along the way, and we could, theoretically, sail by. Uh, it would be costly, and it would affect our morale. I would say that we'd be able to improve our morale upon reaching Sunspear, but, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure yet if we'd want to sail the whole way. That would be quite the commitment. For now, let's ride out to the Whispers and see what's left standing. You arrive at the edge of the Whispers. The downtrodden castle sits on the edge of a cliff and is overgrown with a forest from its godswood, which contains soldier pines and young weirwood. Let's explore the ruins. So this is quite an old keep, it would seem. And, oh, great. We've got some familiar-looking iconography. 
Hmm. How lovely. But actually, in saying that, this is really quite lovely. You know what isn't lovely? Our bloody health. We need to rest and recover. Perhaps coming here right now wasn't the smartest idea in the world. But we'll see what we can find. The tower appears to have collapsed, the rubble strewn underneath the cliff which the castle stands. Upon which the castle stands. Oh wow. Yeah, you can say that again. Uh, let's not go all the way down there. I feel like that would be a fairly bad idea. But this would have been quite the location once upon a time. And here we have a weirwood tree. Very nice one at that. These must be the soldier pines that they were speaking of. Make sure there's nothing else here. And head inside. Oh, oh, there's a chest. I saw that. I'm sure you saw that as well. Ah, at the back there. And wow, that is quite the tree. You come across an old chest half buried in the rubble. Okay. Is that the last point here? And it is. Let's see what's inside. Stones. <laughs> Stones. Buying price is one. It's a chest full of stones. Really. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's quite the find. Quite the find. Fantastic, really. Oh dear. So, we could sail onto Hull, a proper town, to be able to sell off some bits and pieces. Is our father home right now, though? That is the question. That is the question. Well, I think for now, we're going to sail to Hull. We're going to go to the port of Driftmar. So we'll go to this port first. This is where we're going to sail from. And we're going to sail out to this point here. We can see that we start to lose morale and coin. I think traveling at night as well probably isn't a great idea because we just spend more time on the water. Let's just hope that we don't see him. And by him, I mean our father. Okay, we see the training is complete. We didn't gain any new troops, but that's that's okay. So here we have High Tide, Land's End, Spice Town, and Hull. Let's just quickly check in on High Tide. Pretty sure this is just a fortification. That it is. And we'll go in and quickly check on Spice Town and Land's End before exploring Hull. And I've just noticed that we do actually have noblemen. Um, we're escorting them. Let's see if we can have a quick chat with them. Greetings. You must be our escort, right? Yes, my name is Raven. I will be leading you to Sunspear. Well, it's good to know that we won't travel alone. What do you want us to do now? Just follow my lead. I will take you through a safe route. All right. We'll be right behind you. That you will. Onwards then, to Hull. We arrive at dawn. Excellent. Um... Okay, let's actually wait a little bit here. We can see that this is Lord Monford Valerian. Uh, Valerian being, well, one of the families that our family is allied to. We're just going to wait here until proper morning arises before we visit the town. Just in case there is a melee, because melees take part during the daytime. Okay, so first of all, let's go meet the Guildmaster, make ourselves known, and we have advanced in level, which is always good uh, next up let's go to the marketplace we have a lot of things to sell off here now what are they selling they have fine smoked fish and even cheap smoked fish we're definitely gonna pick that up excellent and we're gonna go sell off all of these bits and pieces that we definitely do not need clogging up our inventory the way it does okay and that's 600 coins excellent I accept now onto the tavern. Lovely tunes. There is a slave trader here. 
We have Dragonstone Levies. And we here we have Marin. Alright, Marin. Let's have a chat. Hello. Would you be so kind as to have a cup with me? I'm down to my last bit of coin, and I'd rather not drink alone. What exactly happened to you? It's quite the tragic tale. Sit down, sit down. There's no point in standing up. I was on my way to Pentos, out of King's Landing, with a cargo of spices and peppers from Dorne. I owned my own trading vessel in those days. A beautiful galleon, with a figurehead showing the maiden. We laden at Dragonstone for water, and I was accosted by Stannis Baratheon's Castellan, a florent if I ever saw one, with those ears. Anyhow, he comes to me and he tells me that my ship is now in the service of the king. It seems that Stannis is amassing an army on Dragonstone, and in order to transport it, he needs every single ship he can get his hands on. They emptied my holds and gave me a slip of paper promising to pay me for my losses once Stannis comes into his kingdom. Much good that'll do me now. I've been trying my best to get home, but the roads are filled with outlaws, and so here I am. No money, no ship, no crew, a piece of paper, nowhere to go. Well, as it would happen, I have a band of folks quite like yourself. Can you fight at all? Well, uh, I must confess that I'm not a warrior by trade, but I'm a fast learner. I can ride, and I know a fair bit about trade and prices and such. That could help us out a fair amount. Well, Marin, that will do. Oh, good, just give me a moment, I'll be ready to move. And we have a new companion, Marin, and no cost at that, and this is Marin who can assist us with trading. I'm very happy about that. Sounds like there might be a bard upstairs. See if there's anyone else here lurking. Oh, this is three stories. Damn. <laughs> Just Manfred playing to himself. Sitting in the room all alone. Strumming on his uh, lute. Yes, his lute. I suppose we can go up there. And the rest are empty. So, we're not going to leave yet. We are going to wait here for some time. We do need to actually recover. Um, so let's keep a close eye on our nobles here, who don't actually seem to want to come into the town with us, which would be a smart move. We can see all of the troops that are transferring over to Dragonstone there. There is a lot going on. And don't worry, we will most certainly be paying Dragonstone a visit. Um, it's act it's morning. Let's see how much we've recovered. Uh, we we're getting there. We are getting there. I'll take that. And Marin, let's go ahead and move you up. I think for now you are more than likely going to be support. But we could trade you, train you maybe to be an archer. I'll keep you with the archers for now, and we'll just see where we can go from there. Yeah, because it might be like with Bryden, how we can kind of keep him back, but still involve him in battle from time to time. As for us, we need to continue to improve that charisma to get our leadership higher. It's already pretty high. I'm pretty happy with where it's at, but, uh, well, we could get up a little bit better. Just the chance to command more troops and have them cost a lot less. But what else? What else? Well, trainer. As we are still trying to train up those troops. So we'll improve on that for now. Before we leave this place, we are going to have a quick walk around the streets to be able to see exactly what Hull is looking like. Um. Oh, wow. Okay. It's down here. And this is where having a horse would be great. Because uh, we could just ride straight up towards the town. Nice and easy like, but that is a hell of a town, and it's very well protected as well. Spikes all around the outside. Very nice, very, very nice. We'll go ahead and leave for now, and we're going to continue on to Dragonstone. King Stannis is there currently. Now, I don't think we'll be able to get our friend's ship back, but at the very least we can have a look around Dragonstone. We're going to approach and uh, request entry for a time. 
We're not going to go speak with King Stannis. We're not going to go to the Lord's Hall. I doubt we'd even be able to get in. But we can take a look around the courtyard and see exactly what Dragonstone is looking like. And we're actually inside already. These are probably the guards that lead us inside. And yeah, we can see some mighty dragons sticking out the side of this fortification. And we can even see the volcano up there, which is, uh, it looks like it's still active. We can actually have a, a bit more of a walk around here than I thought. Let's go up to the top if we can. As far as the lessers go, this, this would be amazing to see a battle here. Maybe one day we'll be able to partake in one, but uh, I think that's probably a day quite a ways from now. But yeah, I'm impressed with this. Very good, very good. Fighting here would be, it'd be quite something. There's even a bit of a view out to sea. But that's going to wrap us up in this place for now. So we'll go leave Dragonstone behind. And we are going to, before we take these nobles away, we're going to go over here to Grimsby, to our home. And um, we'll see if anyone else is home at this time. What we might be able to do, instead of doing a straight shot all the way down to Sunspear, is actually sail across the narrow sea and visit some of the other ports along the way. I mean, Tyrosh and Pentos are the main ones. We could go right across to, to um, Rios over here. It could be worth it. It could be worth it. At the very least, we might be able to set up businesses on the other side of the world where we're less likely to come into conflict with them. I'd like that. We'll see if that's going to be possible. Our morale is still excellent, so I'm not afraid of us doing a little bit of a sale. So let's go over to Claw Isle. We're on our way, and we can see that our noblemen are following. They're a little slower than us, but they are sticking with us. We're going to have to keep a very, very close eye on them as we continue along our way here. Because that... That's going to be a target that bandits are going to want to try and pick up. And here we are. We're at our home. And wow. There, there are a lot of lords there. Yeah. Um, there's even um, Sir Axel of Florence there. And the Florence were the ones who um, took our man's boat away. Um, so seeing so many banners there probably not going to be a good idea for us to turn up now. I think they're having a feast. Yeah, I, I, I imagine they are. We're going to we're going to leave for now. And we're going to go across to Grimsby, which is uh, where we are from. We're going to go to the village centre. I'm just going to have a little bit of a walk around. All reminisce. It's been a while since Rowan has been back here. Back home. She's spent many years here with um, the main castle just being slightly further over the hills. And even her mother is here too. This will be a chance for Raylan to catch up, so to speak, to share stories of her travels. And, uh, well, not to share her plans, not yet. No, her mother still feels greatly for Raylan's father still hopes one day they might rekindle what they had. I think Raywind is a bit more of a pragmatist and a realist, knowing that that isn't going to happen. But still, she might be able to give that castle to her mother in part, albeit without her father there. We'll give Raywind some time. I'm sure those nobles will be more than entertained in the small tavern here. And then come the following morning, we will continue our journey. And it is the morning. We actually managed to train quite a few of our troops last night. And yeah, we can see that there is quite the feast going on here. Essentially, all of the Lords of Dragonstone are attending this, it would seem. Oh, all except for the King. Um, Stannis is still sitting on Dragonstone for now. But we need to ride out. Let's go upgrade these troops first of all before we do. 
the crack claw levies. Oh, one of them was ready to upgrade. Well, that's something. We'll take it for now. And I think we are going to go across to Raos. Then continue down to Pentos. And then from Pentos to Tyrosh. From Tyrosh to Sunspear. It's going to be quite the journey. Let's start with the first one. We are more than likely not going to stop in Bravos just because it is a bit further up the coast. But I'm thinking it's close enough that we should be able to make it to here. Although, looking at that, it is pretty much equidistant. If we're trying to be as efficient with our travel on the sea as possible, I think it would be better for us just to sail straight across to here and then carry on on land. Let's make for the other coast. And so I think we can actually only land in specific areas, so we are going to have to sail on towards Pentos. It's costing us coins and it's costing us morale, so hopefully we'll be looking good by the time we reach here. It's been a while since Raywin has seen this harbour. It's kind of like homecoming, in a sense. This whole episode has been returning to home, for real. And now returning to her second home, across the sea. Ah, we have Maron. We're approaching Pentos. That's where I was headed when that big-eared demon took my ship. Tell me more of that. People say that the Pentoshi are just a bunch of treacherous money grubbers, but they have a good head for trade, if you ask me. They make the people up and down the coast grow flax, which they weave here into linen. It's not comparable with Valentine silks and velvets as a luxury fabric, but it makes good summertime wear and you can use it for the sails of ships. More importantly, linen was one of the few goods that someone else in Essos wasn't already making, if you can actually believe that. I had loaded up on saffron, cinnamon, cloves and peppers, and other spices and a chest full of fine arbor vine. I estimated that I could buy linens, furs, velvet, iron and wood, and the extra ships to carry them back, and that still make a profit. I just hadn't figured in Lord Stannis, who apparently didn't care for the common man. It would seem so. But we are nearly here in Pentos. Ah, <sighs> All right. Well, first of all, most importantly, let's take a walk around the streets. Let's see Pentos for what it is. A place that is very different from Westeros. We can see large structures rising off in the distance. Quite the settlements. And we won't be running the entire way up. But we will be stopping off here for a little bit. Enough time to meet the Guildmaster and then visit the tavern. We'll make ourselves known here once again. It has been a little while since we've been back. And visit that tavern. It's very quiet in here, but we'll see if there is anyone intriguing. Very interesting armor, and we do have someone over here, Drollo, and Cyril Linequo? A difficult name to pronounce, that's for certain. We have the tavern keeper over here, but that Pintoshi Lancer, that is some very impressive armor. Let's talk to Cyril first over here. Oh, how he flew so high, and fell so low, then died. And how the worms gorged on him. You, you seem to be one of those delusional fellows, eh? Oh, never mind me. I was just in the middle of composing a voluptuous poem about the illustrious high steward of Kohor, uh, Logon Votiris, a low-born leech catcher who rose to the high position during the reign of the tyrant Bayan Mentarius. But never mind that. I'm sure you'll hear it across the world once I'm done. I'm quite sure you've heard of me. But in case my fame does not precede me, allow me to tell you the story of my life. I was born the first and only son of the high priest of Lice, Horono Linaco. But the courts of the free cities never interested me with their power play and cruel gossip. So, when my father died, I decided to become a wandering minstrel rather than following in his footsteps. And I'm having the time of my life, living under hedges, 
singing to the small and inconsequential folk, never wanting for anything? How wonderful for you. Say, if you're a minstrel and you enjoy traveling, perhaps I might be able to make use of you. You are slightly infuriating, but you do have a way with words, and perhaps song would be a good way to spread renown. Well, that would be wonderful. I've been looking for inspiration for a grand new epic poem, and I might gain some from your exploits. Hmm, perhaps we will sing one day of this very day. I see. Well, you can write about my famous battles and all my conquests, yes? <laughs> very well, my friend. <laughs> Now, before we continue, might you be able to, let's say, loan me some coin? I have some less than amicable fellows who might owe a small amount for the fine arbor wine. Well, how does a thousand sound? I would be happy to oblige. For now, good. Give me a few moments to prepare, and I'll be ready to move. Cyril, welcome. To the company. I'm going to need to make sure that we don't spend all of our coin here on companions, but Cyril might be an interesting one for us to have. It's hard to say no to a minstrel, right? But we do have another fellow over here. Drollo. Yes, what do you want? Well, to pass the time of day with a fellow traveller, if you would permit it. Very well. I don't mind. My name is Drollo. I am the second son of the Karl Ogo, of whom you have no doubt heard. I came to Volantis to train men in the art of battle, and I told one of the Triarchs that it was wiser to flog their slave soldiers now than to bury them later. I am sending them against the enemy, but he would not listen, and I was told to take my services elsewhere. I know, I know. I am from the Dothraki. He ought to be out there. In the plains, slaying men with one hand and plundering with the other. But that life is not for me. I do enjoy battle, but I also enjoy the pleasures of civilization. Well, how about a mix? I might be able to use you in my company. I would be pleased to ride with you, at least for a little while, for pay and share of any loot. I am a skilled swordsman and archer, but I can also instruct your men in fighting. But I warn you that I do not care to fight for a leader who is lax in discipline with her men. For in the long run, they will not respect a soft hand, nor will they live very long. Well, I'm sure you can assist with that, can't you? Good. There is one other thing. There is a bounty. A hundred silver coins. I'll join your command. It's my principle never to enter someone's service without receiving some payment. Very well. Eight hundred. It's yours. Welcome. And there we go. A somewhat expensive trip here, but one that has led us to having two new members and we still have coin to spare afterwards would you look at that um we're gonna go head back for now let's have a look at our party and see how they figure into things so drollo actually doesn't help us that much with training at this stage and i think it's probably because our training is high uh, or at least at the same level as drollo let's have a quick look at your skills good sir um, your training is at three. Well, we could focus on training with Drollo. And we could, that would just allow us to focus our skills elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, it sucks that we've invested some already. You never know who you're going to get and when you're going to get them. Um, so I think it's good that we do have some experience with training, but I think we could maybe improve that further. And, um, yeah, I think you are at least a decent or semi-decent archer. We'll be able to make use of you. I'm sure of it. Um, but Cyril here, how does Cyril figure into things? He doesn't. He really doesn't. Um, 
but I'm sure he will be able to eventually. He has decent charisma. Now that's where he figures into things. His persuasion is very, very high. So if we ever need to persuade anyone of anything, Cyril is going to be our man for it. We're going to be able to send him out and uh, have him be a messenger of sorts for us. He is definitely going to be uh, more in the support line. Yeah, a hundred percent. Even Marin, I think you could be considered to be support for now as well we're gonna see if we can work you out of that but uh for now that's going to be the case and you my friend with your horse we are going to add you to the cavalry so you can help sir jasper rivers yeah we'll see how you all figure into this ah but that is potentially us done in pentos for now unless we want to see if the guildmaster wants us to perform any tasks that we could achieve without too much trouble let's see Hmm, a group of bandits might be able to. I was looking for a reliable helper that can undertake an important mission. A group of bandits have kidnapped a daughter of mine. Very well, the details then. Hmm, a decent amount of coin. I'll accept. Honey Holt, you say? All right, it is done. I'll take the ransom and I'll bring back the girl. Good. I knew we could trust you. Here, the coin. Well, we have the ransom money, and there is a decent amount of it. Now, Honey Holt. Where is Honey Holt? We might have bit off more than we can chew. Let's go check on the notes for now. Locations, and see if we can track down where Honey Holt is. Okay. Uh, it's in the reach? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Okay, it's all the way down here. Well, that's going to take us quite a bit to... <laughs> okay, 15 days. Ah, no problem. No problem. Well, eventually we will be heading back around to Old Town, but uh, yeah, that, that, that puts a bit of a timer on it. Well, from this point, we are going to be riding on from Pentos out to Tyrosh. There is a port down here. That's probably the best port for us to go for. So what we're going to do is we are going to ride across here, touch some of these villages, chicken, and uh, we are going to avoid the Dothraki camp for now. But we'll set sail from over here, touch down in Tyrosh. Ah, and as we approach Tyrosh, Tyrosh, one of the few cities where I haven't been run out by an enraged Magistra and his dirty guards. Why don't you tell me more? Well, before I met you, I travelled for a good few months through Essos. Lords and ladies flocked to hear me sing. But alas, the rulers of the free cities are a jealous bunch. They always found some reason to throw me out of their manses. Be it my beautiful voice or the effect that I had on their beautiful daughters. They don't appreciate that talent, those fat fishmongers. <laughs> Very well, Cyril. We appreciate you all the same. Uh, we are trying to continue on to Tyros here. However, we seem to be having a little bit of trouble reaching it for whatever reason. Uh, let's see if we can sail around here to the port. Looks like we're going to be able to. And we'll see if we can touch in. There we go. We made it in one piece. Well, let's go ahead and take a walk around the streets to start with, to give you a perspective of the town. And we actually start off inside the walls here. In what is a very big and bustling town. Now, you will actually recognize some of the towns from the intro cutscene that I made for this. Um, as these are all places that Raywin has been at one time or another. But I'm incredibly impressed with how Essos is in this in this mod. A lot of work has gone into expanding it and just making it into a, a quite a big decent thing. Uh, let's talk to the Guildmaster first of all, just see if there is anything that we can do to assist here. We have heard one day ago that some travelers on the road from Valantis were attacked by slavers. We would like you to track these slavers down, if you would be so kind. Well, we can do that. This is within my list of specialities. Very good. All right. I'm sure we'll be able to accomplish that. Before we do, let us visit that tavern 
and see if we have anyone interesting here. This is a very full tavern. A lot of people here. Who do we have over here? We have um, Ebros, the Traveller. We have Nondo, who is a slave trader. Sir Titus Harper. Interesting. We have a knight here. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, Sir Titus, let's have a conversation. What you want, eh? Who are you? Who's asking? Did she send you the ore? Ah, oh, look, tell her I'm not interested. Wandering across the world like some sun-mad camel is what she had been doing. Oh. All her tales, and for what? Nothing. My father, my sister, my brother, all gone. And now she sends another one to persuade me. Well, you can tell Tamora that she can go fuck herself. I don't care what it is this time. Gold, silver, or the bejeweled member of the Father above. I say no. 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 Have you ever been attacked by Haraka? That's how I got the scar. And that's the second smallest scar I have. The smallest scar is the result of a manticore attack. Scars and dead relatives. That's what all my hard work trekking across the world has gotten me. While she grows richer every day. Look... I have no idea who Tamora is. I have not been sent by her. I decided to speak to you because you looked somewhat capable. I'm looking for people to join my retinue. Oh, apologies then. You were the first in a while who didn't turn out to be one of her slaves in disguise. The woman's mad. I'll tell you that, but you say you're looking for men. Well, as you can plainly see, I'm as manly as can be. Titus Harper is the name. Rightful Lord of Blackstone. Proud name, long and storied. My castle is in the reach, but after Robert's rebellion, we were forced from it. Fate has left me here with no means to survive but my skill with the bow. I'd gladly join your retinue. Well, now that's the spirit. Quite good. L look, before we leave, there is a small matter of payment. 500 silver? Sound fair? Well, it does sound fair. You best be worth it. Good. Give me a moment. I'll be on my way. Well, Titus Harper, welcome. This has been a trip of increasing numbers. We're getting more and more. We're going to go ahead and leave and see if we can see uh, see these bandits that we're meant to be tracking down. Uh before we do that, we are going to move Sir Titus up, and Sir Titus is also mounted. Interesting. Now, i got to think that it's going to be worthwhile us um, taking perhaps one of the horses of these fine fighters. Really, he's going to be better suited being part of our main line of archers. So, we will take care of his horse for now. I promise, Titus. It's all part of welcoming you to the team. Promise. A promise. I'm going to take good care of him. Um, now, I don't think... Well, that salad is a little bit better. So we'll swap that out for now. But there's nothing else that we can give you at this stage. Still, I think you're going to be pretty well set there. We're going to go ahead and knock you into the archers. Yes. Excellent. And I did see that... Oh, it's Garrett that has foraging. Yes. The others haven't added much in the way of party skills, but that's okay. Not everyone is going to be training towards that, but it's good to have them here all the same. Now, let's see. We are looking for tracking down bandits near Tyrosh, so they could be nearby. These are slavers. They've attacked travelers near Tyrosh. So let's just wait. We can see quite a bit around here. We can't see too many people actually on the, this island currently. Hmm. There are broken men out at sea. Two groups of them. But no slavers. No, not there either. Oh. No. Oh, we're just on the water. Okay. I thought it held up for a second then. Well, we're going to have to have a bit of a search around here to see if we can track them down. If I manage to catch sight of them, we'll certainly be returning. Well, we've had no luck at finding them yet, but we can see 
that our weekly budget is in, and the Weeping Town is really producing a lot for us here. We have our first positive week. I'm very happy about that. Now we have actually made landfall here. We still have our eyes peeled, but we're going to be stopping into Mesa Fea, somewhere that we haven't actually been to uh, as Raywin. We're going to be visiting both the tavern and the guildmaster. Guildmaster, first of all. Just seeing if there is anything that we can do that might be close by. Hmm. Bandits. Okay. If they're close, it'll be nice and easy. It'll be quick work for Raywin. Now, I'm not anticipating to find anyone else in here, but you never know, so we'll have a look all the same. I'll go the tavern keeper. No, just some skirmishers and some spearmen. We have had quite a few people join us in this episode. So many that it's going to be difficult to remember all the people that we have with us. Uh, but we'll go ahead and leave here for now. And we have some troublesome outlaws. They should be easy enough for us to run down. Let's go ahead and engage them. We're going to charge the enemy with our 39. Now we might actually have nobles with us. Um, I don't know whether or not we do, but we'll find out soon enough. And this is our first battle taking place in Pentos. We're going to go ahead and tell our infantry to go ahead and advance by 10 paces. We're going to tell our archers to go ahead and spread out. And they should be okay up here on this hill. They're actually in not a bad position. We've got our first... That must be the leader. Quickly cut down. Fantastic. And we're going to get the cavalry just off on the side here. We have two members in our cavalry now. Three including us. Just, uh, just go around, buddy. That's Sir Jasper. Go around. Go a little bit further up here so that you can get a bit of a charge on. Here we go. They're starting to poke their heads above the hill. We want to give our archers the best chance we can give them. If they can go a little bit further up the hill, that'd be great. We can see Garrett rocking Eamon's armor. And we're going to go ahead and ride out, see if we can cause a little bit of trouble. A good block. Mm, a few good blocks. Archers are doing work. There we go. See if we can continue on to the archers. At least they won't be able to block us. Alright. Infantry, you can move in. Cavalry, same with you. Let's clean this up. There we go. Not a bad break. Oh, that's right, you're a horse archer. Finish him off. You got him. Ah, uh, we got a runner. Let's see if we can chase him down. We've got Sir Jasper going for him. He slowed him. There we go, Sir Jasper. Well done. Very well done. And a good victory. No casualties at all. Fantastic. I'll go ahead and accept that as a victory. And we did actually get a Dornish Sandsteed out of that. Um, speed isn't amazing, but hey, it's not freaking bad. We'll go ahead and take it. And um, actually because of that, we might be able to give Titus back a horse. I like the idea of having horse archers. Especially if Drollo is also acting as a horse archer. Not freaking bad. We'll go ahead and accept that, and we'll go see if we can level up some of our others. We've got a veteran sellsword crossbowman. Yeah, a little, little expensive for us to upgrade. I think we're going to try to focus on the Westland soldiers when we can. We will get one veteran there, but uh, go ahead and upgrade the rest of those. Uh, let's get all spearmen from the Crack Claws. Marin has leveled up. Excellent. Move you up to here, and sure, we'll go ahead and take you for now. Marin, you're going to stay at the bottom there. For now. Let's see. What direction do we want to take you in, good sir? Your persuasion is pretty good, but really it's trade that we want to keep improving. So we'll improve your charisma where we can. And uh, I might see if we can give you some power draw. Yeah. 
We'll get you decked out with a bow before long. Never mind for now. And that's us done there. We've got some bent arrows. Nothing too great that we can give out, but uh, there we go. It's done. We'll go ahead and return this to the guildmaster, and we'll get our coin. Not a huge amount, but it's still something, and it's it's a success. 120. We'll accept it. But that's us done there for now. We are still looking for other bandits, well, slavers in this case, that are meant to be around Tyrosh. So they could be just out here in the waters. So we're going to have a little bit of a sail around to see if we can track them down. Wish me luck. Well, we have had no luck yet. I have explored in and around here. We might have to go all the way down to Mir, perhaps. I am just checking around these last few islands here, but we are quite close to Sunspear as well. Yeah, and well, that's a that's a very large dead whale. <laughs> I think for now we might go explore the shipwreck. But uh, yeah, those slavers do not seem to be around. Okay, and um, well, we arrived at the remains of this shipwreck. We can see it in the distance on a small outcrop of rocks. Let's go ahead and explore. Ah, skirting the island, we can see smoke coming off the wreck. Moving closer, we see what appears to be a gathering of slavers, outlaws, and pirates. Let us attack them. I'm pretty sure this isn't the group we're looking for, but it's someone, and we have a decent amount of us here. So I'm feeling kind of confident. So Jasper, do what you can. This is where it gets a little difficult because I can't tell who we're actually looking for here. Get off my horse. Hey. Okay, come on horse. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. There we go. We got one of them there. Jasper has advanced to level 9. Congratulations, Jasper. Chase down the rest. Got him. Good job. Good job, team. Let's not leave yet. Let's see if there's anything else we need to check here. Oh. Well, we just get what they had, and a jar of Arbor wine for 900 and raw silk, dyes, a basket of lemons even. Fantastic. Worthwhile. With the outlaws dead, you and your men descend upon the camp, searching through their belongings. The pickings are meager, mostly old supplies and worn equipment, but have a few treasures hidden away inside. Definitely worth it. Now, at this point, we are going to have to sail back make our way towards Mir. See if we can find these slavers that are meant to be near Tyrosh. Hmm. Ah, I see. This is not so good. Out at sea, the sky is dark and the winds are picking up. What do we do? Curse the gods or curse your luck? Let's go and curse our luck for now. We lose renown. Our men grumble. Hmm. Okay. We'll accept that for now. It's one of the unfortunate things about being at sea. Sometimes these bad events will happen. We want to avoid it where we can. But still, no sign of these slavers. They could be out here in this area around. We can still see them, though, if we are on land. So we'll just wait for our nobles to catch up. And we'll see if we can make it across the mere, stopping in at a few places along the way. Well, no sign of them yet, and we have arrived at Mir. Let's go take a walk around the streets. A ride, in fact. Ellen accompanying us. And a fine looking city. We're not going to be able to make it too far on horseback here, but oh, look at that. We have found the Guildmaster. Let's ask if there's anything we can do here for the time being. Hmm. Well, we have done a quest like this before. I think we'd be capable of doing it. Let's say yes for now. Okay. 
Well, they're waiting to the evening. And now the troublemakers have appeared. I'm relatively sure. Yep, well, this time we've actually got a sword. That's better than what we've had in the past. But we have no shield. We have no armor. So try and dodge where we can. You can see that we're dealing excellent damage here. We're much more prepared than we were the first time we did something like this. Raywin easily takes care of the group that were here. Let's return back to that guildmaster. Done and dusted. Fantastic. And they're pretty acceptive of us here. Well, and I did talk a little bit about potentially starting a business. Maybe starting something in Mir would be, you know, decent to do. It is opulent here. We're going to go to the tavern first of all, though. Hmm. It is crowded. There is a bard here. We've got a Marish crossbowman here. And everyone seems to like just sitting on tables. Not enough chairs, it would seem. No. And I don't think there's anyone else that we can talk to in here, it would seem. Well, out we go then. And we'll talk to that guildmaster once again. I'm going to have a look to see if there is a business that we can start here. And I will be back in a moment. Unfortunately, there isn't anything that we can actually really sign on to there that is going to give us a profit. Or at least a profit that is worth the initial investment. It is unfortunate, but it is the reality. We are going to sail out here to see if we can find these slavers anywhere, but it's not looking like there is anyone around here. We might just have to abandon this quest for Tyrosh, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way it is sometimes. That indeed looks to be the case, so we are going to continue on towards Sunspear, where we have been <laughs> taking these noblemen to the whole time. And I'm sure that they've had an alright time of it, enjoying their journey to the southern reaches of the world. After coming from so far north to start with, we have come a long way in today's episode. I was not expecting to end up in Dawn, but... In Dawn, there is also a chance for us to earn some more coin, experience, and prepare ourselves for our future. Prepare to, well, make our moves against our father. But now, finally, the port is within sight. Let us roll into Sunspear. Well, and see if they actually want to turn up here. Nobles, welcome. You've made it. We'll give them a second. And there we go. Well, we've almost reached Sunspear. We can cover the rest of our way. Here's your pay. 192 coins. Thanks for uh, escorting us. And uh, we realize that you had to put up a lot with us on this journey. But it's one that will be commemorated in verse. Please, accept this book. But uh, careful, it belonged to a famous maester. As an extra reward. Now, I believe the end is open. The well, may the Father above bless you. Well, <laughs> the coin wasn't great, but in saying that, uh, an extra book, well, that's uh, that's welcoming, and we can see that this will increase prisoner management. Okay, well, that's something, I suppose. We'll go ahead and accept it for now, but more importantly, we are here at Sunspear, and there is a melee. As you can see, the banner of Prince Oberon Martel of Dawn hangs over the town gates and the townsfolk are preparing for a melee let's take a walk around the streets of sunspear and we can see the city here are we gonna be able to take you up the nope that's as far as we can go we'll go ahead and leave you here for now allow alan to take care of you quite the city. Damn, Sun Spear is looking good. Very, very good. And there is a melee happening here. A chance for us to prove ourselves to the Red Viper, Oberyn Martell. This, no doubt, is the, the castle gates. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And so with that, we need to prepare ourselves. Thankfully, in Dawn, they don't have the same opinion of bastards as they do throughout most of Westeros. So we'll be able to 
enter this tournament not just as the Iron Crab, but as Raywin Keltiger, the Iron Crab. Yeah, we're ready. We're prepared. We fought the Hound. Now we have to fight the Viper. Okay. Yeah. Easy task. Her travels had taken Raven further than she could have thought. Back to her home on Crackclaw Isle. And then, returning to the east, she had a taste for life in Essos again. And now, in the south, in dawn, preparations for a melee begin. Excitement throughout the town begins to build. And that same excitement builds in the heart of the Iron Crab. She and her companions would rush for one more drink. Then to the tawny grounds, to the shouts of the crowds. It was time to fight once again. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Raven's Tale. If you don't know it already, you can pick up the very first piece of Rikon Roleplay's merchandise featuring Leonidas Aventus, the Dragonborn himself. There will be more items added to the store in the coming months, all available at rikonroleplays.com slash store. And finally, I'd like to extend a great big thank you to the patrons who continue to make this content possible. 